Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna to show you how I converted my radio flyer wagon to electric. Now the most surprising thing to me about this, which really is just ironic and super lucky, is how easy it was to do. Because if you've ever done uh, electronic type do-it-yourself project, you know that like literally never happens. Now this project, it's only halfway done. So I wanted to stop here and make this part one because I feel like this is something that somebody could do where part two is gonna be a little bit more technical and advanced to where I feel like, you know, probably the average person wouldn't wanna take on. It's gonna be kind of complicated, but it's gonna be a great video because now when I'm gonna make it, you know, super fast, radio controlled ad steering, maybe even jump it off some jumps and just totally impractical, something you'd never use, but just cool because I can and I, just wanna play and have fun and do it. But this is practical because the whole idea came from 4th of July, I'm walking uphill on grass in flip flops, pulling my children. And it was just kind of difficult, you know, to walk uphill on uneven ground. And I was like, man, there's gotta be a better way. And I thought, what if it was just electric? You know, I could just press a button and it just scoot itself up the hill. And then I realized like, that probably is not hard to do. I should look into it and I did and then here we are today where I've got it done and that's what I wanna show you in this video is how I did it and walk you through the steps. All right, a big reason why this project was relatively easy is these wheels right here. You can see they're about eight inches. They're actually like eight and a quarter, but there's a lot of scooter hub motors like these guys right here, which it's a wheel and motor in one, that's eight inches. They're all over the internet. Depending on where you get them, you can get them relatively cheap. I was lucky and got the wheel, the motor controller, and even a throttle for 78 bucks on Amazon. I went ahead and got two of them, but you can get them even cheaper if you go to like Alibaba Express or something. You just kind of have to shop around, but they're all over the internet. Just an eight inch hub motor. And really what you just need to decide on is the voltage and watts of the motor. These are 36 volt motors and I think they're 350 watts. They're more than enough power, but it's almost like a direct replacement. You just pop one out, put one in. There is a little tricky part to it, which I'll show you here in a minute. I would recommend getting two. You could probably get by with one, but it might tend to pull the cart in one side since only one wheel is spinning. Um, but you're gonna be holding the handle, so you could probably counter that. All right, the next thing you're gonna need is a battery. And you really just wanna make sure that you match the voltage. So if your hub motors are 24 volts, get a 24 volt battery. If there's 36 volts, get a 36 volt battery. But when you're shopping for a battery, you're gonna see the voltage and then the amp hours or the milliamp hours. Basically the voltage is gonna supply enough power and the amp hours is like how much gas is in the tank, essentially. There's a little bit more to it, but again, shop around the internet. You know, make sure you have your ESC electronic speed controller. Just for an e-bike or a scooter is what you're looking for. A lot of times they're gonna come as a pack. That's how I bought mine. But in case you're really trying to save money and you buy them separate, I'll put a link to this one in the description. Again, Amazon, it was like 20 bucks, but you are gonna need one of these for every motor you have. So you can see two motors, I got two of those, but you can run them off one battery, but you're gonna need one of these per motor. And then the last thing you need is a throttle. All right, and then again, I bought a kit, so it came with a throttle. But if you're buying them separate, or if you can, I would recommend getting a thumb throttle, not the like twist throttle for a bike. The thumb throttle is gonna be way easier to attach and work a lot better on this guy. All right, let's get these wheels off so we can put the other ones on. Now, they're not really designed to be taken off, so it can be a little tricky. You basically have to pop off that red cap. Then you gotta take off this uh, locking washer. Really, you just wanna wedge something underneath it, like a flathead screwdriver or something. Once you get enough room, use your pliers, get underneath it, and then just wiggle it off. All right, now we're gonna remove this fork, and there's actually a little screw and plastic piece that holds it in place, so you just unscrew that, and then uh, gently pop it out with the hammer. It comes out super easy. Now comes, in my opinion, the most difficult part of this entire build, where you actually have to cut a couple little slits out of these forks. Now I think there is another way to do it if you're not comfortable doing that. I think you could actually bend the forks out and then slide the wheel on and bend them back. It might affect the integrity of the metal a little bit, but if you have a cutoff wheel and have done something like this before, this is a lot easier. It's just a couple little quick cuts and you're basically making them fork similar to like how a lot of bicycles are where you can slide the axle on and off of the wheel. And then we're just going to slide the wheel on. And now we're to the part where we just need to connect our ESCs and battery. Let's cover connecting your actual hub motor to your electronic speed controller. Basically there's three sets of wires here, which is basically where it gets the power. Got yellow, blue, green. The reason it's easy 
is you just connect yellow, blue, green. Then you've got this, you'll notice it's yellow, blue, green, and you got two more, red and black for power and ground. It's a very common connection. These normally just connect right up and you don't have any issues. And then your motor's connected to your electronic speed controller, so that's easy. And those connections usually match up and are really easy. It's the other connections where it gets a little bit different and where we are actually gonna have to make some cables to be able to connect one battery and one throttle to two of these guys, which it's actually really easy. It would look something like this, right? We have one side that has one end, joins in the middle, and then you have two coming out on the end. Easiest way to do it, in my opinion, is you buy these guys right here, which is basically like got some solder in the middle, and then this is heat shrink that wraps around it. These ones are waterproof, so it has some extra glue right there to seal it up. But you're basically gonna put one end of a wire in and then two ends of the wire in like that, match up in the middle, hit it with a heat gun. You could use a blow dryer if you don't have one of those. And then it's basically gonna shrink it down, seal it up on that, and you got this Y connection like that. And that's gonna make it so we have one throttle that connects on this side, and then you have two that come out so you can connect one electronic speed controller and then the other electronic speed controller. And then your throttle, almost always gonna be three cables, okay? Normally, it's red, black, and green, power ground signal, but sometimes it's a mix of colors. That isn't always true. Like the two that I have there was purple, pink, and black. Purple was the signal, pink was the power. So you make your Y connection, you connect the end with one to the throttle. Now the easiest, best connectors for doing electronics and this kind of stuff. You just wanna get a DuPont connector kit. You want the 2.54 millimeter spacing. This is the most common, super easy to do. Another thing you're gonna need is this crimping tool. So you don't even have to do any soldering or anything. Basically, you just put these little connectors on the end with this crimp tool. And it basically allows you to make ends that look like this. Okay, this is a female, this is a male, and then they connect like that. So then you're gonna have your throttle which again, I think it would be better with the thumb throttle. It's gonna connect to one end and then it's gonna come down and split into two other ends and each one goes to this. And then for your battery, you also need to make a Y thing or you can do like I did and just buy one that's pre-made. This is a XT60 connection. I'll put the links in the description. You can buy XT60 connections. So you can put one on here and one on your battery if it doesn't already have those kind of connections and has something different. That way it's all compatible and matches up. This is a little bit trickier. We have a little bit of soldering or you could just do the extra homework of making sure everything you buy is compatible and has the same kind of connectors so you don't have to do anything on your own. And that's almost it. There's only one other kind of connection that might give you a little bit of trouble with these. Sometimes they have what's called an ignition or basically it's just a switch turning it off and turning it on. Now there's gonna be two different kinds that you'll see. One has two wires, one has one wire. All right, if it has two wires, like let's pretend it was this, all you have to do is take what's called like a jumper cable or just a piece of wire and connect the two ends to turn it on. So the way you turn it off and on is you'd connect, disconnect like that, super easy. You could permanently connect them if you want, put a twist wire connector on the end and the way you'd actually turn it off and on is just by plugging and unplugging the battery. Now, if you have one where it's just one wire, it's the same thing, but you're gonna connect your jumper wire from the one wire to the positive on your battery. Instead of connecting the two wires, that's how it goes. Now, in the middle of your jumper wire, you could put an on-off switch, just so that you can turn it off and on, or just disconnect, connect. One other thing that might be handy is you connect everything and you realize that the motor is spinning the wrong way. There's what's called like a learning cable. It's normally like this, where you just connect the two cables, like these connections connect. You can connect it while the power is on and it'll make it spin the opposite way. And then you can just disconnect it and then it'll be spinning the opposite way. So you just basically touch these two wires to switch the rotation of the motor. I know it seems complicated, but once you do it, you'll realize it's actually not too bad. And that's it, those are the only wires that we need. Before you attach anything to the wagon, I would recommend just connecting all the wires and making sure it works first. It's a lot easier to troubleshoot that way, but once you know everything's working, go ahead and attach it to the frame. A lot of different ways you could do it. You can see the undercarriage of the wagon has a lot of different bars and stuff. Because this isn't gonna be a permanent install and I'm gonna change it for part two, I just used these Velcro straps, which were surprisingly strong. But yeah, once you get the battery, the ESC secured to the frame, just uh, organize the wires and then you're ready to have some fun.
I definitely didn't add brakes. 